Okay, so in a previous video, we talked about basic brush settings, and that's basically where we came up here and looked at the paintbrush's size, the hardness or softness, and how you can change different control modes, like turning on your pressure to control um, the thickness or thinness of a line, and turning on the opacity or changing the pressure for opacity. So as you press softly, it's more transparent and hard, it gets more opaque. So all of those different settings, I'm going to go ahead and undo all of those different settings. Make sure you watch that video so that you understand um, where we go from here. So we looked at just basic round brushes and over here in the brushes panel, um, we looked at size and hardness and we had some tip shapes that are just basically round. But we also have all of these different um, and by the way, these ones, soft round pressure size and hard round pressure size, that's kind of pre-made brushes that already have those settings for you so that you don't have to manually set them yourself. Um, as we go down though, there's all kinds of different um, brushes that sort of mimic actual paint brushes. And then you have things like charcoal and watercolor and um, all these different airbrushing and whatever. So... Um, make sure you check through those, but what I would like to, you to do instead of picking from here is go into the brushes panel. So if we go to brush or brush settings, both of those things will bring up both panels. You can see brushes here and brush settings here. So let's go ahead and see what some of these brushes do. So these are your basic round brushes and then you have brushes that are going to mimic, mimic um, paint brushes. So then we have some airbrushes and watercolor and then charcoal and pencil and all that kind of good stuff. So then we start to get down here and you can see that I have scattered leaves, scattered maple leaves, grass, dune grass. Um, there's all kinds of different stuff. And if you look online, there's actually a ton of different um, um, brushes out there that people have created. So you can actually create your own brush, but download some of those. So if you're looking, let's say for blood splatter for a ha haunted house poster or whatever, then you can go out and search for a blood Photoshop paintbrush or pho Photoshop blood brushes, and then you should be able to load them in here. So if I go to this fly out menu, you should be able to see, um, and by the way, I chose brush tip right here so that we could see the little tiny tip instead of just the, the kind of paint stroke but you can see there's an import brushes and then you can also export selected brushes if you've created your own and you wanted to share it with somebody else. But let's go ahead and see like what is this pastel and charcoal paper. So I'm gonna go back to black and I'm gonna just draw and you can see that it looks like um, charcoal on paper or pastel on charcoal paper, paper, there you go. So again, we can play here and say rough texture and again the harder I press the darker it gets so let's go down here and like you have heavy smear wax so let's go ahead and choose a different color for that and make this bigger with the bracket keys so there you've got that kind of cool waxy smear color that you can create some nice texture with um, so all of these brushes I think you you may or may not have some of these because I might have already imported these so this is like a hypno, you know, that kind of twirly, let's see if I can make it bigger. Yeah, but see how it's pixelated because the original creator of it um, made it in a low resolution format. So be careful with that when you're downloading brushes, some of them come in low resolution. So I wanted to show you beyond actually um, having brushes and, and playing with the kind of brushes that we've got over here, I wanted to show you what you can do in terms of brush settings. So I'm going to find, where's the maple leaf? Okay. So if I click on this maple leaf, maple leaf brush um, and turn on a new layer, I'm going to make it a green maple leaf. And then I actually want to do the background as sort of an orange yellow because I want to create a nice um, fall, fall sort of look. So there we go. All right, so it's really tiny and I'm going to make it bigger and you can see it scatters and it gets all kinds of crazy. So I'm going to undo that and go back into the brush settings because somewhere around here I should have just the maple leaf and not, not like the scattered maple leaf. So I'm not sure. Yeah. 
somewhere around here and Photoshop has changed all these different things so now all the brushes that I could easily find before are now weird and scattered so we're gonna just leave it like that and go back into brush settings so that's actually what we were gonna do is we were gonna mess with scattering and all this kind of stuff so I'm just gonna show you what it would look like maybe on your computer if you didn't have any of these um, settings on there so we're gonna do that and change that so basically you have your your ship tape or ship tape okay tip shape and this is brush 74 so it is a maple leaf and right now it's at a pretty big size and I don't want it to be that massive size so if I start to paint now it's going to paint it in the green that I've selected but that doesn't at all look like let me turn these off that doesn't at all look like the um brush that I set or, or I mean it doesn't look like any of the leaves that I would ever put on a tree so we can start messing with these different shape settings and some of these I'm not going to show you in this video but definitely play with them and I'll show you how to play and, and what kind of things that I do when I'm testing out these brushes so if you wanted it to flip if you just click once it's going to make one one stamped brush so if I wanted to flip it X I can flip it if I wanted to flip it Y I can flip it upside down so you can also change the angle of it so you can see that they're all gonna start if I paint it it's gonna all start leaning to the left so then you can say how much space is between them so if you wanted to create a maple leaf border um, that's a really good way to do that um, so let's go ahead I'm gonna pull it back and you can kind of choose what you want to do with that and those aren't bad settings I just wanted to show you what each one does so shape dynamics is where you can change size jitter um, and angle and and all that stuff but you changed it all here but that was for one and then as you can see it, it painted them uniformly jitter means that it's going to change those numbers every time it paints a new leaf so if i do size jitter and pull it down to zero everything i paint is going to be the same size if i put it up to 100 then there's going to be multiple sizes in there and the further you go the bigger um the result. So if I make this a little bit bigger, you see how it's got like little, huge, medium, smaller, etc. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. All right, so I'm going to do size jitter and I'm going to make that way smaller because it doesn't need to be that small. And then you can choose if you want to have an angle jitter. So right now it's kind of not really turning, well, it is kind of turning them. So, well, basically angle jitter is, you can see down here in this brush settings that it's, it's going to change which angle each brush sits at. Okay. So this one doesn't really have any roundness, but you can mess with it. So right now, see how it's flat. And if I do roundness jitter, you see how some of them look like they're falling like in three dimensional space. So you can mess with that, especially if you're having falling leaves in this particular instance. So let's talk about scattering. So again, right now, if I paint a straight line, it kind of goes in the line. So a lot across that line, if I choose a scatter jitter, it's going to go really far or kind of close off that line. So now if I paint one, you can see that it tries to stay along the line, but some of them scatter off of it. And this is really easy to see if we make it really small. And then if we paint the line, you can see that scatter. So if we were to do this a lot bigger, you can see it scatter a lot more. Okay, so this is what I do when I test out brushes. I just create a bunch of blank layers on a throwaway document. All right, so let's go ahead and change the count. So that's going to have a lot more. So if I had just a regular count, and I'm going to bring that scatter down a little bit. So here's the normal count. Now if we do a massive count, you can see it's really dense. And then if you do a count jitter, it will do some, some will be smaller, some will be more dense, etc. So again, we're just trying to create some more natural leaves. And then the other thing I would add in here is color dynamics. So again, I have green in the foreground and orange in the background. And so this will do a foreground background jitter. So I can bring this up here and I can paint and you can see a little bit of yellow in there now if I do a lot 
then you can see a lot of green and yellow, which, you know, is actually pretty cool. Now, if you do hue jitter, it's actually going to get away from the green and orange, and the further you get away from it, it's going to add some weird colors. So if you want it to be able to go maybe a little bit yellow and this go, you know, a tiny bit brown or whatever it may be, um, we can do a little bit of hue jitter, and there it looks a little bit better. So again, you can change the saturation and brightness and I'll let you play with those things, but that's the basics of working with the brush settings in Adobe Photoshop. And some of these are gonna make sense for some brushes and not others. It's just a matter of playing around and then resetting back um, when you don't think something is working. So <clears throat> the last thing I wanna show you is that if you don't check apply per tip, then even though I have um, foreground, background jitter and hue jitter, when I go to paint this, you can see that it's still green, but then I paint it again and it's kind of a little bit orange, orange green, then it's orange and then it's green. So this is not applying it per tip, like each single leaf that is painted. It's applying it only per paintbrush stroke. So I don't really like that, but if you did, yeah, you can do whatever you want. But for me, I like it to paint each individual leaf with a different jitter between these two colors.